Hi, this is Agas Srivastav and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'll discuss latest rule. This topic is important for both BSc and class 11-12 students as question comes in entrance exam. So let's start. So I'm starting by drawing something. This is a very familiar game. You have often played in schools or at your homes. This is tug of war. This is a game of strength and teams from opposite sides pull the rope. Whoever brings the center to some desired position wins the match. So let's imagine that both the teams have equal strength and the center of the rope is at exact position and it is not moving anywhere. So what will happen if we remove one person? So I am erasing one person from the right side of the team and then see who wins. Now the players are 4 on right side and 5 on left side. This is very simple. Of, of course the rope will move to the left side. So the question is whether the strength of those 5 person has increased or the strength is same because now on the right hand side there are four players the same strength effectiveness has increased. The same thing happens with the sizes of cation and anion. The size of cation is smaller than its parent atom and the size of anion is larger than its parent atom. We can compare this with a game. In case of cation, one player is reduced and in case of anion, one player is increased. In the similar way, intervening electrons reduce the force of attraction between the nucleus and the outermost cell electrons. Intervening electrons are electrons residing in the cells between the nucleus and the valence cell or the same cell leaving the electron rest electrons. These electrons reduce the force of attraction between the nucleus and the outermost cell electrons. The reduction produced in the force of attraction due to the presence of intervening electrons is called shielding effect. Now I'll discuss some formulas and the main latest rule. You can note down in your copy. So, Z effective, effective nuclear charge is equal to Z which is the atomic number minus sigma. Sigma is the screening constant or shielding constant. Z is a nuclear charge or atomic number and this is the effective nuclear charge. Now the Slater's rule for electron residing in different orbitals and then I'll solve some questions which often comes in exams of BSc. This you can note down sigma for an electron residing in an NS and NP orbitals. The remaining electrons of NS or NP orbitals gives a contribution of 0 0.35 to the value of sigma. Next, the uh, electrons in the n-1h cell makes a contribution of 0 0.85 to the nucleus and the rest inner electrons makes a contribution of 1 to the value of sigma. So next, the value of sigma for an electron residing in n minus 1 d orbital. So the number of 
or the remaining electrons present in n minus 1 d electrons makes a contribution of 0 0.35 to the value of sigma and rest electrons present in n minus 1 s n minus 1 p and other inner cell makes a contribution of 1.0 to the value of sigma. If sigma is being calculated for an electron of 1s orbital, there will be a contribution of 0 0.30 from other single electron in 1s orbital. Now let's solve some questions to find out the sigma and effective nuclear charge. So the questions are calculate sigma and z effective for number one 4s electron in manganese atom number two for the last electron present in chlorine atom number three for d electron in copper so now let's solve these questions are important as it comes in bsc exams so the solution for first question first we write the electronic configuration of manganese it is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 3d5 4s2 so the number of remaining electrons in 4s2 is 1 since 1 is for study the number of electrons in n minus 1 that is 3s2 3p6 3d5 is 13 and rest 10 so the value of sigma is 0 0.35 into 1 plus 0 0.85 into number of electrons in n minus 1 that is 13 then 0 0.1 into 10 and we get the value after solving is 21.40 you can calculate and see z effective will be z minus sigma 25 minus sigma answer and we get 3.60 next i solve question number two the electronic configuration of chlorine is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p5 the number of electrons is six except one the number of electrons in n minus 1 is z and rest 2. So the value of sigma is 6 into 0 0.35, 8 into 0 0.85 and 1 into 2. After solving this, we get a value of 10.90. So z effective is 17 minus 10.90, which is 6.10. Next, we solve the third question the electronic configuration of copper is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 3d10 and 4s1 so since we are considering 3d10 the number of remaining electrons is 9 in 3d10 and rest 18 so sigma is 0 0.35 into 9 and 1 into 18 and we get the resultant value 21.15 and z effective we get z minus sigma z is 29 minus 21.15 equal to 7.85 this was for d that's all for this video if you think the solution was a bit fast you can go back and screenshot and note it down thank you for watching this video if you have any question you can tell in the comment section if you like this video give it a thumbs up like and subscribe for more thank you so much